Good evening, folks, and welcome to the Let's Talk live stream. And today we're going to be watching Terminator 3 Rise of the Machines from 2003. And this is honestly what this was honestly the last successful Terminator film, believe it or not, financially. This one had a budget of about $185 million, made over $400 million at the box office. Every other film after this was kind of considered a failure. Technically, Terminator Salvation is a sequel to this one. This one was actually directed by Justin Mustel. I think that's how you pronounce his name. So he took over for James Cannon, who has no involvement in this film at all. No producer credit or nothing like that. So this was just a standalone film. What's up, Rogue One? How's it going, buddy? And Kevin's in here as well. And Kevin's got a few questions all lined up, ready to go. So we can talk about Terminator 3, Rise of the Machines. And one of the things that Kevin said is this is the first Terminator film that he saw in theaters. And that's the same thing for me. Um, just if anyone has any hearing issues, if everything sounds good, let me know. Just very curious. I did some tests, but you never know how it comes across. Uh, and he wrote and Rogue World were well at my brother's birthday. What's up, dude? What's up, Nick Chang? How you doing, buddy? Welcome. Welcome. Um, you know, we'll let everyone get in here before I start the film. If anyone's going to be following along or just wants to chat about movies, you could just throw some, uh, regular old chats in there as well. Feel free. Whatever you guys want to talk about. That's what I'm here to talk about. Rogue One just wrote, it's unfortunate I couldn't watch the movie with you guys, but I, I could say hello still. Yeah, you can still say hello. It's your brother's birthday. That's more than, you know, a good enough reason not to watch along with us. You know, just jump in the chat. If you've seen the movie before. Tony Loderider Smith is here as well. He wrote, hey, uh, what's up, Tony? How you doing? Um, Kevin Kruger asked me also, how would I rank the Terminator films? Well, I go T1, T2, T3, so all in a row. Uh, after that, I would probably go Dark Fate, then Salvation, then Genesis way at the bottom. That is by far the worst Terminator film, Terminator Genesis. Um, what really bothers me about that one is, is that they try to incorporate the first Terminator film into that movie. And I just think that's, you know, it really bothers me since the Terminator is my favorite film of all time. And you're just trying to reproduce what we've already seen. And I just don't think it works in my opinion. I think it's very uh, bland and then you're not even using the same score. Uh, it just really bothers me when they did that. And Rogue One wrote, T3 is a solid entry in the Terminator film, in my in my opinion. Yeah, T3 is very, like, that's the best way I would describe it as well. It's very solid. It's just very, you know, it's it's not doing anything offensively bad. But, you know, we take out the Brad Fidel score. You really do miss James Cameron's direction. I feel like it's trying to be more of a summer blockbuster, which Terminator 2 was trying to do as well. You know, the original Terminator film, which is why it's my favorite, is because it's more of a horror film it's like a sci-fi horror film you know there's some action sequences in it but it's nothing like terminator 2 terminator 2 it does have some very obvious blockbuster sequences very much in the middle like very you know you know right away when the t-1000 and the very early scenes when they're in the galleria and he looks at the uh, mannequin that looks like the t-1000 as if he was liquid and he just looks at him like oh you look like me it's a wink and a nod at the camera you know, that's something you throw into a summer blockbuster, something you would honestly see like in the MCU. It's not a bad thing or anything like that. I think it works in T2, but I think in this movie with those sunglasses and everything like that, I think we just go a little bit too over the top in this movie with those, um, you know, summer blockbuster sequences. I get what they were going for, but I don't think it really works entirely. <clears throat> so, uh, uh, how's Faith doing? Asked Tony the Lone Rider Smith. She's doing good. She's in the other room right now. You know, she hasn't actually, uh, she's not going to be on this week's show as well. She just took the week off. We couldn't line it up this week, but she'll be on next week's show. But, yep, she misses all you guys, as always. Uh, Nick Chang wrote, T3 was no masterpiece, but quite enjoyable. Yeah, that's how, I, you know, the thing with T3 and uh, the thing with T3 and a lot like what Kevin Kruger said, this being the first one that I actually saw in theaters means that I kind of have a special spot for it. I actually remember being excited for the lead up to T3 and I, I had a great time, but I was also 11 years old at the time. So of course I was excited and I loved it. And I still love this movie to a certain point. I love the ending to this movie. I think it's a very, uh, you know, it's honestly, it's a very ballsy move for them to end this movie the way they do. You would think they're going out with a very happy ending, but it's the most bleak ending we could get, which does lead perfectly into Salvation. But what hurts Salvation and what hurts T3 is we never have a consistent John Connor. Like Kevin Kruger said, his uh, co-worker thinks that Nick Stahl is the best John Connor by a mile. And honestly... Edward Furlong is good, but uh, Nick Stahl is pretty good, too. I would say that they're – I don't think it's by a mile, but Nick, you could argue that Nick Stahl is the best John Connor we've ever had. I, I think Christian Bale actually might be the best we've had, but 
you know, the fact that John Connor is one of the main characters in this series and we've never had a repeat John Connor is unfortunate. So you could argue Nick Stahl's the best one. I think he's very good in this movie. The only thing I ever remember Nick Stahl for after T3 is when he disappeared or nobody could find him for like a couple of weeks. And I don't know what he's doing now. You never really see him pop up anymore. Claire Danes is in this movie as well. And then, of course, this is the last movie Arnold Schwarzenegger made before he became the governor of California. Uh, if I miss anyone's things in the chat, let me know. Uh, it's moving a little bit faster than usual. And Nick Chang also wrote, and the Blu-ray is due for a 4K upgrade. Yeah, I, I'm not too sure when we'll ever get T3 on 4K. I believe that's the only, that and Salvation are the only two we're missing on 4K Blu-ray. Uh, Genesis, believe it or not, and sadly has a 4K Blu-ray. But we haven't gotten T3 yet. We haven't gotten Salvation and honestly, I think those both would look good on 4K. Salvation, eh, you know, the cinematography of that movie is very ugly. It's very gray and beige and sandy, which goes very much against how we were, you know, shown the future to be in the first two Terminator films. With Terminator 1 and Terminator 2, we had we had a very, like, blue, purple, gray, yes, but it was also very dark. Like that, You know, they were moving around at night. That was a point they made sure to illustrate to everybody in those films is that you couldn't move around in the day because of the AHKs. And then, it, you know, Salvation, they don't care. They're, it's just a bright, sunny day. It looks like they're in Arizona or New Mexico. They're just flying around and running around in the sand. And I'm just like, this is not what we were kind of promised. And I just kind of feel like that hurts Terminator Salvation because it just looks like a very generic 2000s film, to be honest with you, like every other action film that was coming out around the time. It's just I think the 2000s was a very ugly era for cinematography. <coughs> so I think that really does hurt it. And uh, Rogue Run, Ro uh, what will you watch Terminator 3 on DVD or Blu-ray? Uh, we're going to be watching this one on Blu-ray tonight. Actually, we'll watch it. I have it in this Terminator collection right here, which has the first four Terminators in it. And if you guys know, there's another scan of T1 that is different from the scan that's in here. This is the old scan. The other scan I also have over there. T2, you know, there's numerous scans. But T3, I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, Rogue One, is that the T3 that's in here is the only scan of T3 that's been released on Blu-ray. So it hasn't been upgraded in forever. And, you know, I just feel like T3 kind of gets forgotten about. It was very popular back in the summer of 2003. It was released 4th of July weekend, like... People were excited for T3, and I was really excited for T3, and I had a blast when I saw it in theaters. Um, all right, just going to scroll through the chat and make sure I didn't miss anything. Uh, <clears throat> Tony Lowrider Smith said, saw this in a packed theater, and I sat next to a fat guy whose breathing was louder than the movie. <laughs> Bad experience. Yeah, I can imagine. Um, that sounds like a plane situation where you just can't get out of there, but <laughs> yeah, that would definitely... Uh, Ruin the movie theater experience for me. I had a similar experience to that with um, The Hangover when I saw it in theaters where, honestly, I had to go back and see the movie again because I could only half hear the movie through the entire thing. They definitely had the sound system too low, and then there was uh, some things going on next to me that kind of made the experience overall pretty bad. <laughs> so I get that. <laughs> uh, Kevin Kruger wrote, What do you think of Arnold's performance in this movie? Um, I think it's pretty good. It's uh, the thing with Arnold in this movie is he's not the regular T-800. He's a T-850 in this. And this is the last performance he does before he becomes the governor. The thing with Arnold in this movie is definitely he's definitely just taking direction. He just kind of feels a little bit generic in this movie, which is fine. I feel like the actual big acting performances that we're asked to get from in this movie, which I guess we never asked much of Arnold to begin with when he comes to the first two uh, movies, which is why everyone says he's so great. But in this movie, when they do ask him to do a lot of like the cheesy one liners, like, you know, that works in other movies, but it doesn't work in this movie. It really honestly comes across very cheesy and not in a good way. Like this feels like a very moldy cheese, not a good cheese like it does in the other movies, like in The Running Man or Commando. This feels like very it feels forced, like the talk to the hand thing like that just it's so much of the time and dates this movie just like the score really dates this movie too that's another thing but arnold's fine in this movie but he definitely doesn't do the heavy lifting or anything like that yeah and actually talk to the hand it was just horrible <laughs> yeah it's the only scan thanks for real going and it also has adobe digital 5.1 mix yeah that's what i was just looking at which you know those adobe digital 5.1 mixes they apparently are coming back because paramount insists on using them on their new 4k releases so if we ever get this re-release, which is weird because 
Um, this movie, from what I looked, this Columbia bought the rights to this, but Warner Brothers distributed it, which is very strange because Columbia is owned by Sony. And I believe it was still owned by Sony in 2003. So that's why Terminator has just always been wrapped up in rights issues was because somehow, I don't know, it got liquidated in another sale. It's, it was originally Orion. Forget it. The Terminator rights, you go through all those movies, it'll take you down a rabbit hole. I don't even know where it is right now. <laughs> Who has the franchise? Uh, yep, Rogue Run Road, sadly, no DTS HD Master Audio, unfortunately. It was Adobe Trio HD, not digital. Oh, okay, Adobe True HD 5.1. All right, that's actually not too bad for the time. Just drinking some coffee tonight, guys, out of my Jurassic Park mug. Maybe we'll do a watch along of this this summer, because I do think a Jurassic Park is one of the greatest summer blockbusters, and I do want to talk a little bit about the 4K Blu-ray for Jurassic Park, because that is one of the more disappointing 4K Blu-rays. So we'll wait a little bit. What time is it right now? It's 7.10. We'll wait another like 5, 10 minutes before we start the movie. And uh, I'll let you guys all know. I'll do like my commentary as the movie's going along and what I thought of certain things. Um, but yeah, Terminator 3, uh, I'm honestly in the mood to watch this. So this kind of worked out. I haven't, according to my letterbox, I haven't seen this since 2021, which I think is wrong because I thought I rewatched this two years ago. But no, nope, Letterbox, I guess, doesn't lie. Um, <clears throat> Rogue Run wrote, Dolby Digital's fine, but fine here. I've been on a, I, I've heard T3 could have been better. Yeah, it definitely could have been better as far as the audio goes. And T3 overall as a film definitely could have been better. It just, um, you know, it's not bad. Nothing in this movie is bad. It just kind of feels like a missed opportunity. And it's just, of course, it's going to live in the shadows of T1 and T2, which are both classics. So, you know, and plus, you don't have James Cameron, which is very unfortunate for the entire franchise, really, ever since T2, is that he's left it behind, and he's just out there making Avatar movies, which is uh, not great. Um, Kevin Kruger, uh, what does Faith think of this movie? You know, Faith was not a Terminator fan until she really uh, got with me, which is weird, because you've seen me do videos with her sister, Carmella, and Carmella is a big Terminator fan, Faith. You know, when we first started dating, not a big Terminator fan. It took about a few times of her watching it made for her to come around on T1 and T2. But she always did, if I'm correct, like T3. Faith, do you like T3? Uh, yeah, it's okay. She said, yeah, it's okay. That's kind of what I remember her saying. So <clears throat> she's not a big enough fan. Obviously, she's not going to be doing the watch along. So, And I have the one Blu-ray in the house. And I don't know if it's streaming. If it is, I'm assuming that it's on Max. Um, let's scroll down, make sure we get the chat going. This was the first Rogue Run wrote. This was the first Terminator film that disturbed uh, distributed by Warner Brothers. While Sony Pictures did the international release. Ah, uh, okay. Very strange how the rights for this franchise. You know, this is like a cornerstone franchise in Hollywood. Or you would think so, at least with the first two movies. And yet it's never really had a studio like locked onto it. It's always just kind of been passed around, which is weird. You know, other franchises like. You know, with even Warner Brothers, the Batman franchise and the DC, any DC franchise, you know, always associate that with Warner Brothers since, you know, the 70s. And it's weird that uh, such a big franchise like the Terminator really just you never think of a studio with it. You know, you think of James Cameron and Arnold and, you know, Arnold's kind of always popped his head in after T3, but it's never really been his franchise ever since Dark Fate. Um, You know, Dark Fate, he was kind of just in there as a carpet salesman. What do you guys think of Dark Fate, by the way? Let me know in the chat. <clears throat> The Chang wrote, Arnie wasn't going to do this film without James Cameron, but Jim told him to do it and asked for a shitload of money. Oh, well, I actually, Nick, they gave him $30 million. So of the budget, I think they estimated it at $187 million. I was just reading this before, and they gave Arnold Schwarzenegger $30 million to do this movie. And yeah, uh, if someone's offering me $30 million, I'm not turning down $30 million. So you, you know what? That's fine. <laughs> Uh, James always thinking about the money. It, you know, he's a businessman at heart, isn't he? That's what <laughs> a lot of chatter. It sure really, it really is. That is insane. That's a lot of money. <laughs> $30 million. And it's funny because I always think of Jim Carrey. I think he always had like a check for $5 million that he wrote for himself. And he, I think he got that on the cable guy in 1996. So that's always like what I think is like a really high paycheck. And over here, they're throwing $30 million around in Arnold Schwarzenegger. So forget about it <clears throat> it's crazy so all right we're almost ready to get this started 
So this movie is 109 minutes. So I actually thought it was a little bit longer than that. Um, Brad Fidel didn't come back to do the score for this one, which I another thing that I think really hurts it because we don't actually even hear the Terminator theme until the credits. So it's just uh, whatever this guy's name is. Hold on, because uh, something interesting about this guy, actually. Marco Beltrami. This guy is actually from Long Island and he's like lived like apparently went to Warren Melville High School, which is like 15 minutes away from where I live. And he was born the same year as my father. So he did a little bit better than my dad. He's a you know pretty successful Long Islander. He did a lot of other great scores as well. So I thought that was pretty funny, but I do not like the score. So as much as the cop, that's as far as the compliments are gonna go with him and the score in general. Not my favorite score. Uh, he scored Demolition Man, like that score, and that fits, you know, I, I guess it does kind of have like a, it just feels very generic, and I always felt like the first two Terminator movies, the scores always felt special, like they don't even feel identical to each other, yeah, we kind of incorporate what we had in the first Terminator, it was very Sith heavy, then we obviously move away from that for uh, Terminator 2, but they're both iconic Brad Fidel scores, and you really miss him on this movie, and that's like a big negative for me, not having him do the score. I, I, uh, he did Quiet Place. Yep, he also did do Quiet Place. Rogue One, that is correct. You know, he's not a bad. He's not bad with other ones. I just, I guess, I'm just really connected to Brad Fidel and what he did for these movies. But, uh, you know, it's unfortunate. So I'm at zero point zero three seconds on my film and then when i'm about to when i hit play i'll let you guys know and we'll count them down from five so everyone can get ready if you're watching along if not you know i'll just still play along and i'll let you guys know what's going on so it'll be uh just basically like a commentary track i don't know if any of you guys uh watch uh the, the ringer uh podcast network there's a couple podcasts on there i listen to called the rewatchables is one of them and another one is uh, the big picture but they did a commentary track for babylon which is another one of my favorite films which i thought was awesome and i didn't watch the movie while they were talking i just listened to it <laughs> um will salvation be another stream too wrote rogue one yeah well at this point since this is the third terminator stream we're gonna have to finish it up right so I guess we'll do, uh, you know, it's always fun to do a bad one. So we'll do Salvation, which I think is kind of in line with T3. And then we'll do Genesis. We'll do Genesis. Uh, so even though I hate that movie, I do have it on 4K. And then we'll do Dark Fate. Because I think Dark Fate is pretty good. I would say that's like the fourth best. This I still think is the third best. All right, guys. So we're about to start. I'm going to count it down right now for everyone who is watching along. Again, I'm at three seconds to start. So if you want to line it up with that, but here we go. So for everyone who is watching along, I'm about to start talking about the movie as it's going. And if you're watching on the replay and you want to hear this as a commentary track, this is your warning. Uh, when do you think you'll do Salvation Rogue One Road? I will do it probably, what is this, April? Probably a month from now. We'll definitely do it in May, 100%, probably on another Saturday night. Uh, all right, guys, here it is. Five, four, three, two, one. All right, we're playing Warner Brothers logo. So, like I said, WB. Before David Zaslov got there and tried to ruin it. <clears throat> oh, Blue Wave. Intermedia. It's like the opening of an independent film with the amount of studios. <clears throat> C2 Pictures. All right. At least you know you get the Terminator font in there. Jonathan Mostow film. Starts off pretty bleak. Don't you love how you just see all their logos and then you just get a written out version of the same thing right at the beginning? Arnie gets the first credit, of course. Of course. He got paid $30 million for that. Rise of the Machines. 
I do get very nostalgic for this movie, though. Iconic one. <clears throat> I loved how the Arnie HK rise out of the water. No, it is awesome. I do like that we're like kind of on the highway again, like the original at the end of the second one. Very 2003. How's the audio sounding, Rogue One? It sounds really good. These do uh, play up to Dolby Atmos, these headphones, so it sounds pretty good, but uh, I don't have it on very high because I'm also talking and I want to make sure I don't sound like a buffoon. You know? An aged up Nick Stall. The makeup's not bad there. See, this is the future. Again, at least some blues in here. When we get to Salvation, we're in the daytime and a little bit more like this reminds me of the opening of uh total recall same led job just need, just need a bald guy walking around <clears throat> just running from his problems Oh, well. How much do you think Budweiser paid for the ad placement? That's a cool transition. I always love that transition to the skulls on the ground, so we know that we're in the future now. Like uh, Nick Chang said, this is an awesome shot with the HKs. And the CGI really doesn't look bad here. Industrial Light and Magic did the CGI, uh, you know, all these kind of effects, all the computer graphics, CGI effects, while Stan Winston was back for the practical effects, which is always good. But this movie definitely has less and less practical effects compared to, obviously, T2 and T1. Uh, not much computer effects, if any. Hmm. This looks pretty good, too. I mean, yeah, I would prefer a real Terminator over a CGI Terminator, but still looks better than Genesis. Low bar to hit. <clears throat> Rick! What's up, Rick? Big John Stud. <laughs> oh, Rick. Y'all caught up on 97 Raw? <laughs> Just it does just seem like a miserable life that this guy has. I need to do my homework. You do, buddy. Next Saturday night, Revenge of the Taker. And Raw's been pretty good. <laughs> Next stall. I like that they put his title right in front of him just falling off a motorcycle. You know, Claire Danes is a pretty big grab, especially for 2003. For all you guys with OLEDs, what do you guys keep the brightness at? I've kind of found that I like it around 70. I know a lot of people keep it at 100. I used to, but it would bother my eyes. So I lowered it to 50, and then I found that was too low. And now I keep them at 70, and that seems to be the sweet spot. So, But I also have uh, very bad light sensitivity, so I like it a little bit lower than maybe other people do. Now, this is cool. I do like how the Terminator comes into this one from we come in from the past. Although, watching it in the moment, it has aged. <laughs> and there she is, the TX. What was her name? She was a model, and obviously she's a beautiful woman. 
Her hair looks great like this, and they ruin it by putting it in a ponytail for the rest of the movie. What a shame. <clears throat> like I said, you watch this movie, it just feels like 2003. The Chang Rob Christians. <laughs> Rogue One Rogue. Honestly, I just go I just go for it for the uh contrast and brightness, except for the alien versus predator 2. That movie was so dark I had to turn to the damn <laughs> the damn picture up. Yeah, Alien versus Predator is ridiculous. Both actually, I know the second one's worse, but both of them are such dark movies. And the Chang Rob Christana. Yep. Did she do anything else in this after this as far as acting? Oh my god, look at the cell phone. This movie it just dates itself all the time when you watch it. But man, I gotta be honest, that stuff, and I'm sure Kevin Kruger feels the same way. It just makes you so nostalgic. I mean, this is 21 years ago. I, I can't believe it. I remember sitting in the theater and like where I was watching this movie. So it's just a one of those moments in time kind of things. And honestly, the audio is pretty good. It's moving around these headphones pretty well. The tires, like as they screech, it is moving left to right, which is very impressive. That means it's a pretty good mix. So, you know, a little bit of uh, TLC, maybe add it up to the visuals because the visuals, you know, right now don't look great. But I am watching it on the Series X and that does upgrade Blu-rays pretty well. Damn. Like, this would definitely look great with 4K, a little HDR over it. Although, it's not the worst looking Blu ray I've ever seen. Ugh. <laughs> now, this is what I mean about the blockbuster stuff. She makes her tits bigger. Come on. I'm not going to lie. When I was in the theater, though, I thought, that's nice. I was impressed. <laughs> she likes her gun. This guy, when he becomes uh, the TX, it's just he's overacting like crazy, but we'll get there. Catherine Booster. Look at how pristine this guy's uniform is. <laughs> Scott. He looks like a Scott. <clears throat> Rogue Run wrote, I thought the first movie of AVP was fine with performances and the aliens and predators were fun throughout the throughout the film, especially the fight scenes. The and the live queen, the and the alien queen. Yes, uh, the, it had its moments. The first AVP I like a lot more. At least that one feels very atmospheric. I do love the setting of that. The another movie I saw in theaters and I had a good time with that. So I have a lot of nostalgia. What is that? Oh, four. 0304 in that area. I think it's 04. At latest, it's 05. Look at all the beautiful appliances. What is that? A Coles? Ah, uh, the computer virus. What do we think that is, guys? <clears throat> The lack of blood and character, and also not a good unrated cut, which has terrible, what does that say? CGI'd blood. Trust me, it looks cartoonish. Yeah, I haven't seen them in a while to remember what the CGI looked like, but I can only imagine it looks of the time, which is probably absolutely god awful. And I mean, you didn't even have to go that route, but that's just how you know we get new technology and it just circles all the way back to Jurassic Park because everything circles back to Jurassic Park. You know, we ask the question, you know, if we should do this, you know, we we figure out we can do it, but should we do it? You know, John Jeff Goldblum got it right. Everything, and you know, these movies teach us that too. Artificial intelligence, look what we end up with. 
We don't learn that. This is a cool shot. It's funny that it's technically L.A., but it's like a different part of L.A. from the first two movies. It feels very different. But that's pretty cool. Again, though, kind of dates itself here. There he is, Arnold. In tremendous shape again, of course. Naked. Same shot from the first one. Ah, thing of beauty. Everyone will never learn. When will they leave their action action have consequences of AI? They will never learn that there's consequences to artificial intelligence, unfortunately. We always like to do things the hard way. <laughs> he loves being nude. Yes, he does. It's probably in his contract. What do you know? Coincidence. Nick Stahl shows up at the perfect time. Vet, smart move. Nicholas Head. <laughs> Nicholas Head wrote, I know we're supposed to hate this movie, but I absolutely love it. Uh, it's always the perfect time to appreciate a film. Yeah, you know, if you love this movie, and I know people who love this movie, it's completely understandable. And like I said, I, I like this movie. It, but of course, I know that a lot of it is nostalgia. It's nowhere near as good as the first two, but you know, I've I've loved T1 and T2 since the late 90s. So for me, and there's people out there who've loved it since day one, but I've loved the original two Terminators since I was late 90s. So when this was coming out, the excitement that I felt, I didn't feel that again till the dark night. And I don't think I've ever been excited like the dark night since the dark night. Mismatch. Now, Arnold does look a little bit older here. He looks a little bit like a politician already. See, we're trying to recreate what we did in T2. Like, what are the chances? It's dumb, stupid fun. <laughs> yeah, they're having a good time. And now this, like I said, this feels a little out of place. Like, too much of the summer blockbuster stuff here. And I get it. Fourth of July weekend. And again, this is not something that bothered me at the time, but just felt like the first one, the characters we got, it was a more violent scene, whereas this one is more played for comedy. Talk to the hand. Now, outfit's perfect, but then he's got to throw the sun on the sunglasses on. <laughs> eh, it's Arnold is a politician. Not everyone needs to be as not everyone and not everything needs to be a summer blockbuster. Exactly. I mean, I get it. It was the time for this movie to come out to be a summer blockbuster. I just don't think it worked. Macho, macho man. <sighs> Nice little throwback to T2. Accurate. Oh, important. I think Nick Stahl did a good job with the material given Nick, uh, Nicholas Hedero. Yeah, he definitely is pretty good. He, I don't have many complaints about his performance in this movie at all. It's just, you know, again, the hardest thing about it is that he's playing a character that we saw in T2 played very well by Edward Furlong. A little bit cheesy at times. But then again, you know, Nicholas Stoll doesn't come back to play in Salvation. And Christian Bale does a good job. And then 
you know, in Genesis, we get what's his name, Jason something. And he's good, but again, very forgettable. And uh, it just becomes, and then in Dark Fate, technically we get Edward Furlong, but not Edward Furlong, if you guys know what I mean. If you know, you know. We'll do that in another watch along. Super, I like this the build up to what we know. We know in the back of our head that that is Skynet, but it's just kind of playing along while the TX is out there doing its thing and while the T850 is out there, you know, trying to prevent the TX from killing uh, Catherine Brewster, which we haven't gotten up to yet. She's got a list of people. Catherine Bruce is just one of a few. <clears throat> oh, really? Nicholas Head wrote, Edward Furlong told the story about a week ago about how he was supposed to be in T3 and lost it because he couldn't stay sober. That's really a shame. And yeah, I know he had sobriety issues. I don't know how he's doing now. Um, last time I saw him, he didn't look too great. But, you know, there was a moment there. T2 wasn't the only thing that Edward Furlong was in in the 90s. He was in American History X, too. And he was also in uh, Detroit Rock City. Um, I like American History X. Detroit Rock City is pretty funny. It's kind of forgettable. I've seen it a couple times. But, you know, Edward Furlong... I guess sobriety just kind of got in the way. He definitely had talent. I mean, T2 was his first movie. He was found in them all. <laughs> Nick Stahl, though, like Nick Stahl had a moment too. Like of the time, him and Claire Danes, like of this time, like they were big. Uh, Nick Stahl, I think, had sobriety issues as well. So Christian Bale, the only thing with him is um, he was kind of a dick on set for uh, Salvation. But I think we've kind of moved past that now. Did not like the light guy. Never knew a vet that looked like this. But yet, this is what I think of a vet. <sighs> Damn junkies. <clears throat> he definitely looks dirty and tired. I like her hair like that. Definitely works. Very red. Catherine Busta. Rogue One Rogue, what are you drinking on this fine evening, John? Uh, I'm just drinking coffee and water tonight, actually. No alcohol this evening. Taking the, the night off. Figured, you know, I don't know. Wasn't in the mood. Painful. <laughs> Paintball was big in the 2000s. <laughs> Who can it be at the door? Hmm. Uh, poor Hercules. I like that it says Hercules right on the cage. That's pretty cool. <laughs> uh, Rogue Run wrote Pepsi, Wild Cherry. Uh, I want to play paintball, especially after watching The Office. I've played paintball a few times, but I don't have the greatest of eyes, so I was mostly just getting shot. And, you know, it's not really fun just getting shot. But I, I get a couple of hits in here and there. But, again, it, it, getting shot really does hurt, so... I didn't really enjoy paintball too much uh, from my perspective. Uh, if you have better eyes, it's probably a better time. Again, Claire Danes, Mike Kripke, that son of a bitch. Macho, macho, man. 
right. It's weird. She went from making out with Edward Furlong to Nicholas Stahl. I don't know how they look similar, but she knew it. She knew it right away. T-1000 coming after you would do that. Man, I've forgotten that the Blu-ray was actually a re-release two times because of the picture quality Rogue 1677. For this movie, for T-3, I only have the one version that was uh, packed in the set. I don't have it on a standalone. And here she comes. The original release has a 1080p, which I believe was meant for picture in picture. Oh, 1080i. Yep. Not Catherine Boots. I guess that's supposed to be sexy or practical. Like, that's a little bit, like, again, a little cheesy. But not in a good way. So they released the 1080p sometime later. Okay. I'm sure I have the probably the 1080p version. Actually, I could just check that. Somewhere. <clears throat> Don't you make a noise. So if you can just classify it by looking at it, why are you tasting it? Questions. You guys ever heard Arnold do a uh, commentary? It's pretty ridiculous. <laughs> it's actually really funny, though. Wow, she, lo she look how excited she got when she tasted John Connor's blood. She's like, oh, my God, that's the guy. I'll be back. <laughs> That's a real one. I don't have a voice. Yeah, I'd be scared too. Like, see, this is what I mean with the score. It's, you know, it's a little bit low. And it's not adding really anything to the scene. It just sounds just very generic and of the time. That sounded pretty good. And that looked pretty good, really showing the weight. Hmm. And look who it is, guys. Mr. Arnold Schwarzenegger himself. Mm -hmm. I can tell her what he's doing. Liar. That's a, a line from Commando. Remember how I told you I'd leave you for lost? I lied. <laughs> Rogue One just wrote, uh, oh, hey, so I was a little wrong since they actually used the HD DVD release for the first release of the Blu-ray. Ah, uh, HD DVD. I did not know that, actually. I didn't even know it's had an HD DVD release. That thing, uh, 
came quick, fast, and in a hurry, and was just gone. You know, even though the T eight, the T X is supposed to really like be the most powerful Terminator, it never sold me on it. Like I always still felt like the T one thousand was still better. It felt like the TX was still more beatable, despite the fact, and this is obviously a shot right out of the first Terminator movie. It's crazy in 19 years how much he aged. Now it's been 21. 40 years, my God. No. <laughs> now he's just leading him out there. Nicholas Head wrote, Kristana Loken, how do we feel about her? I believe she was uh, in Blood Rain as well. Blood Rain. Uh, did I see that? I don't remember her really being in anything else. She's good in this movie. A lot like Arnold in the first Terminator movie. She's not asked to do a lot. Obviously, she was a model first, so she does a decent enough job for what she's asked to do. I don't like that they tied her hair back like this. They gave her like this businesswoman look, but I guess it kind of works, but I think she does a good job in this movie. The red leather doesn't do it for me. A lot of this movie does take place in this morning. Really a very quick couple of days. I mean, I guess the, every Terminator film is like that. But this spends a lot of time at one location. That sound. It's the dentist. Ugh. If you had a cavity filled, you know what I'm talking about. Eh. Was it a Tundra? I thought it was a Ford F-150 at first. Yep. Cell service was terrible. <laughs> Nicholas had wrote the TX and moving parts, so maybe so maybe that's why they didn't feel as invincible. Yeah, that's exactly what I think it is. Is because of those moving parts, it doesn't feel as invincible, which, you know, obviously just because of the fact there was liquid metal in the T-1000 just seemed more shocking and, like, unbeatable, especially since we see it basically get beaten twice and still come back. In this movie, I just feel like we don't have those moments. They did a great job, though, of illustrating to us how heavy the Terminators are, which... They do in moments in T2 and not a lot in the first Terminator. That was like, here, they can't get this guy up. And now that's it. He's on his way. Rogue Run wrote, what would you say how Dark Fate looks on 4K since it's the worst Terminator film? I actually don't think Dark Fate's the worst Terminator film. I think that Genesis holds that spot by a country mile. Dark Fate is all right. I actually think Dark Fate is actually better than Salvation, too. Dark Fate, I, uh, I admire them for trying. That's what I can honestly say about that. They, they, Everyone was trying, and they were trying to actually make a Terminator for a new generation, but they still just can't let go of the past. Like, bringing back Linda Hamilton, which was to excite a lot of the T2 fans, and then not to spoil Dark Fate for people who haven't seen it, they make a decision in the first 10 minutes of the movie that really just really spits in the face of uh, what I consider to be the best Terminator film, so that's very disappointing. And, you know, as far as the 4K goes, it's a very good 4K. It's a very well-shot movie, actually, and 
I appreciate the 4K Blu-ray. When we get up to that movie, we'll talk more about it. Um, I, I kind of, I appreciate Dark Fate. I just, I wish I would have loved it. What salv, uh, what salvation was fun and better than Dark Fate? Admittedly, yeah, salvation has its moments. I do like the callbacks to the first Terminator. I love the third act of that movie with the Terminator, like, you know, factory. I mean, it's really a uh, cheap cash grab, essentially, or at least a cheap pop from the fans of the original Terminator. You couldn't get Arnold. So you found a way to still put Arnold in the movie and make him uh, look like how he did from the first Terminator movie. I don't, I don't know if this is the Blu-ray or what, but this looks horrible. The way they lit this, it looks like they had the exposure too low on it. Oh, you don't think that they know that the cops are behind there? Come on, Claire. Now, this is a well-shot action scene. I don't love how it's lit, but I don't remember it also being this dark on DVD when I had it, or in theaters. It could just be the Blu-ray. Like we're talking about. Not a very great Blu-ray, and it's pretty old at this point. Now, this is impressive. From a Terminator standpoint, being able to control every vehicle and everything like that. Makes sense, but that's what Skynet essentially did with artificial intelligence. That would make sense that any Terminator would be able to do something along these lines. 2003, the early digital age. No, I don't know if this movie was shot digitally. I'm pretty sure it's still shot on film. There you go, Arnie. I always had to put him on a motorcycle at some point. But this looks good. Well done action sequence. It's just, it's nothing like the highway sequence in T2. When they fly a helicopter underneath the bridge. And that's the problem. When you watch the sequel to Terminator 2, that's always in the back of your mind of everything they did in the previous two films. And, and this being in the daytime, I, I don't think that works. Now, yes, there's daytime sequences in T2. But uh, it doesn't look like this. Yeah, it is a tundra. Imagine that was your house. You come outside. And now you got to deal with this shit. I'd be absolutely pissed. So that actually was pretty good. Like The sound is very well done on this. moving around well. What's happening now, Rogue One Road? Right now, Arnold is hanging off the crane as they're driving him through the buildings, essentially using him as a wrecking ball. The TX is driving the vehicle. He's holding on to the hook. They just made a hard right turn. Still hanging on. Fire truck is to our left. And now the fire truck just hit him. And all the firemen are about to look at him like, what the fuck? Yep, see, right there. Now he's about to drive. That's another call back to the, team, uh, the first Terminator when he gets in the big rig. Wow, just destroys buildings. It's going to cost billions to fix it. 
Well, don't worry. He's about to become the governor, so he's inheriting that debt. But yeah, a lot of damage here. Although the buildings look empty, so I'm not seeing a lot of deaths. Surprisingly, the roads are very empty. Looks like it's in a similar business district as they are in Punch Drunk Love. You know, you could tell it sounded like a lion, didn't it? Well, oh, this only ends one way, and that's bad. Good thing the leather is still intact. Not a lot of people out there, and I hope they also like their cars getting destroyed. Well, that's for sure. A lot of people went to work that morning without a place to work. And also, um, if you had a car out there, chances are that thing is total at this moment. Wow. He's like, wow, it's amazing how you look so different now. You look almost like Nicholas Stahl. It's like a snake leather. So no work, no cars, not a damn thing. Things are getting depressing right now. <laughs> yeah. Well, now they're just driving along. You guys think this is a rear projector? I think they're actually just driving around. It's a different model, guy. Kevin Kruger wrote, my coworker says this is the best Terminator. Kevin, uh, your coworker is wrong about that. I mean, I get that this could be their favorite. But even objectively, he's got to admit that T2 is the better main movie. Like, I, I can't even say that it's a favorite of mine being Terminator, that T2 is still probably the better main movie. They had more money and some of the stunts that they were able to pull off are absolutely incredible. So you got to admit that at least T2 is better than T3, right? Even if you like T3 more, but I don't know. That's their opinion. I disagree with it. T3, it's a good movie, but I, I just, it doesn't even compare to T2 or T1. But hey, that's crazy. I do like the damage on the T850 here, though. That is impressive. This guy's feeling himself because he's been here before. This is when he finds out. He's not wrong about that. We always just punting it down the road because we're human beings. Kevin Kruger wrote, do you think we will get a Terminator 4K box set this fall? Well, I'm a Almost 100% sure we're going to get the 4K. Um, it's all but confirmed. Still no idea. My best guess is it's going to be Warner Brothers. So more than likely, if that's the case, we will not get a box set. If it's a boutique label, there's a good chance we'll get a box set. But my gut says, just from what I've heard, that it's going to be Warner Brothers. And if I had to guess, just based on how Warner Brothers does their releases, they don't do special box sets. They did the... Uh, Exorcist Bible edition last year, and that was a UK only release. Here in the US, we just got the regular standard slip cover and the steel book. So I imagine the best we'll probably get here is also slip cover and steel book. TX is faster and more powerful. I mean the entire franchise box set. Kevin, I would love that. Imagine, but no, probably not. <laughs> 
um, because I don't think the I don't know who has the rights to all these films, but it's a uh, I, I, it's very similar to like how it is with Friday the Thirteenth and A Nightmare on Elm Street. So I don't think we'll get an entire box set anytime soon. Maybe we can get T one and T two bundled together, but I don't think three and four getting a four K release is going to happen anytime soon. As much as I would love that and an entire collection, I would double dip for that a hundred percent. But I don't foresee that happening. I would love it though. Don't get me wrong. Rogue Runner, I'd still need to get T2, T3, Terminator Dark Fate since I have T1 and Salvation on Blu-ray. Um, I don't know if this is out of print, but this is definitely something that's worth grabbing. It's pretty nice. Um, this was actually the one of the first Blu-rays I ever bought. I bought this and Abraham Lincoln Vampire Hunter when I started my Blu-ray collection. So I had to start off with the first Terminator films. You hear the music playing again. This feels like a blockbuster, but I do love this little running gag. Well, it's not really a gag, but you know, this running storyline that leading up to Skynet. So we know what's going on that right now they're like, we're in the end game essentially about judgment day, just around the corner. Funky man, funky, funky. Rogue one wrote, um, Hmm. Not a lot of people here. Yeah. I guess a lot of people don't love uh, Terminator three. But it's all right. We're all here. And then if other people want to watch this on the commentary, they can. As long as the people who are here are having a good time, that's all that really matters. Uh, Kevin Kruger wrote, are you a fan of the Sarah Connor Chronicles? Uh, yeah, I liked it. I watched it only once. It feels very much like a Fox show of the time, honestly. Like if you watch like Prison Break or 24. But it was good. It's just um, they canceled it and we never really got a nice conclusion to it which is unfortunate this guy and plus you know it's saturday night so i definitely think that probably hurts the amount of people watching along That show was also released on Blu-ray, also the first three seasons, I believe. Yeah, the Blu-ray is usually uh, always included on Prime when they do Prime sales. Look at this cocky. Kevin Kruger wrote, I hope we get another Terminator movie before Arnold passes away. I, I don't know if I want Arnold to come back for another Terminator movie. I love Arnold, but, you know, I feel like if they're going to do Terminator again, at this point, it does need to be rebooted and have no connection to the first or any other Terminator movie. And I don't want a reboot, but I just can't see a logical way to have this all keep tying back. And I think they were trying to do that with Dark Fate, but it just didn't get enough money. You know, the way they were changing around, like it wasn't called Skynet anymore. Like they felt like they were making a Terminator film for the future. And I just feel like that's the only way we could do this at this point. It's been 40 years since the original one. And I just don't want to see Arnold come back there and just make it feel like we're just putting him in there just to put him in there. And that's how it felt like Dark Fate. They were just doing that. And, Genesis, he just felt, unfortunately, pretty old. Um, Uncle V, he just got popped in here. The next team, Terminator should feature Stallone. Imagine that. <laughs> That's the Terminator film we need. We need Rocky to punch the T-800 in the face at some point. Uh, Rogue One wrote, probably not, since I believe they're making a remake with James Cameron. I mean, if they're doing that, I can appreciate that. Anything to get James Cameron to do something else besides an Avatar movie, I'm in, because... I'm worried that's all we're going to get from James Cameron for the rest of his life. I mean, really, we've gotten one Titanic movie and two uh, <laughs> Avatar movies in almost 30 years, which is absurd at this point. Mm -hmm. 
That's all he does is Avatar. Yeah. That's really it. He's an Avatar guy. He's got the next 35 years all lined up and ready to go for him. I'm still waiting on my Abyss 4K, wrote Kevin Crew. Really? They, your Abyss 4K hasn't come yet? That's crazy. I thought that they actually straightened that all out. I didn't realize it was still going. I did have a May 11th original, like, before it was supposed to come, and then it just, like, randomly, like, shipped and showed up. So I'm hoping that's what happens to you. Uh, I miss his films, kind of like True Lies and Titanic. Yeah, that's the thing, Rogue One. I miss him just making other movies, too, besides Avatar. And just because there's so much time between the Avatar movies, and I, I haven't enjoyed either of them. You know, they're acceptable films, but other than the visuals and the audio, nothing has blown me away about those movies. You know, they feel very much like other movies that we've seen before, like Dances with Wolves. It's just their jump in technology is really impressive. But, oh, uh, man. I just do not love those movies. <clears throat> they said something in May or June. Well, I, I hope uh, I hope you get it before that, because that's a really long time. Um, it shouldn't take that long. Ugh, I love that. That's it. That's all we get. The blood spraying on the picture. Sounds like a chainsaw, though. Yeah, Kevin, I hope you get that way sooner before then. I have a feeling like it'll I have a feeling you'll get it before this month's out. I mean he did Piranha 2 even. He got fired from Piranha 2 though. That's what's crazy. He basically has disowned that movie. But look at that. His first movie takes place in the water. He was always in love with the water, James. Here we go. Just couldn't open the cemetery. Have you ever met James Cameron? Kevin Kruger asked me. No, I've never met James Cameron. Um, I'm not actually somebody who uh, wants to meet some of their heroes. Like, believe it or not, I would love to meet Arnold, but everyone else, I'm not somebody who actually like gets like very like starstruck. If that makes sense, like I wouldn't pay for an autograph just because. Um, I don't know. Like, I feel like they don't want to be bothered. So if they don't want to be bothered, I don't want to bother them. If that makes sense. So I've never gone out of my way, but if I ever met James Cameron, I would just like shake his hand and say, I love his work. Um, please do another Terminator film. <laughs> but I, I wouldn't say that. I would just say, thanks. I love your work. It would be simple. You know, I've met a few, like I've obviously, I just read, met Jay Muse and uh, Kevin Smith pretty recently. They were really cool. They're very down to earth, but you know, you always hear those horror stories when you meet your, uh, meet your heroes and you know, don't do it. <laughs> Look very cardboardy. You didn't even know what happened to your own mother. <clears throat> For me, billion dollars would you go on a Titanic? Would you go to the Titanic with Cameron? <laughs> Um, if he gave me one billion dollars, would I go in that little ship thing down to the Titanic with him? No, no, that's something I could never do. I'd be petrified the entire time, and I really could use a billion dollars. But I mean, especially after what happened last year with that, you know, that ship that went down there and exploded. Essentially, no, I, I would never do that. I don't. I couldn't even go in a submarine. Like I, that stuff is petrifying. I'd always be worried the entire time. This is pretty good acting from Nick Stall in this moment. I think the score makes it seem more cheesy than it should be. She still doesn't know.
This is impressive. Yeah, spit the bullet out. <laughs> Uncle V, did you pick up the True Lies 4K? Sure did. Reviewed it on the channel. It was uh, you know, a little bit waxy, but I still enjoyed the 4K. I haven't seen True Lies, you know. Well, I've seen True Lies in a recently, but I haven't seen it in high quality in a very long time. So I really did love the 4K and seeing it again for the that first time. It felt like seeing it for the first time in a very long time. It was had a terrible peacock stream. I love the aliens 4K, said Kevin. I'm glad you did. I mean, that was the one that kind of let me down a little, uh, more than any of them. But I know a lot of people uh, love the aliens 4K. The original Fuzz, he was a big fan of it. And I appreciated his review explaining why he enjoyed it. I definitely feel like those were the most divisive 4Ks. Did you also scoop up brass? <laughs> Actually, you know, it's funny. Sitting right here on my to-watch list. <clears throat> Uncle V. Paprika. That's right here at the top of the pile. So it should be on in the next couple days. Hopefully before next week's Revenge of the Taker. And Kevin Kruger asked, did Matt like the James Cameron 4Ks? Yeah, uh, you know what? I don't think he's watched them yet. He has them, but I don't think he's watched them yet. hes I don't know why he hasn't. Actually, yeah, no, he hasn't watched them yet, which is a surprise. <laughs> Uncle V asked, did you scoop up brass as all ladies do it just at least? No, I haven't scooped that up yet. I hadn't heard about that getting a release. <laughs> now, this is impressive. Driving a car through somebody's stomach. You know, you got to be confident in yourself. <clears throat> April 2nd, it was released. Really? That's my birthday. It would have been a nice birthday gift. Nobody felt like I deserved it, though. Well, of course you messed up, Mrs. Brewster. This is the only time, this is the only the other character besides Arnold Schwarzenegger who appears in all the first three Terminator films. Mm. What's your most anticipated for the rest of April? Asked Kevin Kruger. And uh, probably Ocean's Eleven, to be honest. I mean, I'm really excited for The Departed. Uh, I have King Kong 4K order that just came out this week. I just won't get it till when The Departed come just because they're coming together from the Atomic Movie Store. But when I get those, I'll review those as well. I'm really excited for The Departed also. But I definitely think it's Ocean's Eleven. I'm excited for the entire trilogy, 12 and 13. I haven't seen 12 and 13 in a long time. I only saw 13 once, which I saw it in theaters. And that was the last time I saw it. So I'm pretty excited to revisit those. And I'm hoping that they look great in 4K Blu-ray. They should in my, uh, you know, the Warner Brothers releases. I'm excited for Mean Girls, though, too, at the end of the month. And uh, you guys saw my review for Rolling Thunder. That's a great release. So if you guys haven't seen Rolling Thunder, that 4K Blu-ray, I could definitely recommend you grab if you're a first-time watcher because it's a really good movie. And this is a cool shot with Arnold walking out of the cemetery with the casket on his shoulder. And then, of course, this guy's going to get PTSD about seeing the, T1, uh, the T-800 again, or in this case, a T-850. Cyberdyne Systems Model 101. I wasn't a fan of Mean Girls 2. Yeah, I tried the new Mean Girls movie. Uh, me and Faith watched it one night. And it was decent. But I'm not a musical guy, so I kind of felt like the songs actually would take me out of it, like how I feel a lot of, uh, how I feel about a lot of musicals. But it was still enjoyable, and everyone did a good enough job. Uh, the leads are great. They're all great actresses, but yeah, I wasn't blown away by the movie. It was very forgettable where I, the original, I finally came around on it. Yeah. You know, I wasn't a fan of it when I was younger, mainly just cause I, I don't know. I didn't see it too much, but now I think the original is a classic. So I'm really looking forward to that 4k. And I also like the, uh, pink that they put all over it. Mm. 
Oh, she's my wife. Rogue One wrote, Mean Girls Musical is fun, I thought, but I now prefer the musical stage version. Really? Well, you know, a lot of people do consider the stage version to be their version. Uh, she doesn't know what she's walking up to. You know, why would you reveal yourself this early? You could have just killed him, killed her. They had so much time. You didn't say it right. You're supposed to say, come with me if you want to live. Rogue One wrote, hey, I'll be back again. Since we are leaving in the internet, we'll go slow, so I'll be back when I get home. No rush, Rogue One. We'll be here. Uh, you should have wrote, I'll be back. Uh, Kevin Kruger, what's your least favorite musical? Oh, I mean... I'm just not a fan of any of them, so I don't really, I haven't really seen like a ton of them. So, like, I, I don't know what my least favorite would be. There's not really too many other things that are just absolutely bad that I'm like, oh, I'm never going to see that again because I just won't watch really any musical unless I hear it's like phenomenal. Um, I don't know what a bad one is off the top of my head that I didn't like. Like, I'm not even like a really big fan of Grease or anything, and people love Grease. Thoughts on operas, Uncle V asked. Um, never really got into them. Um, the closest thing to an opera is I enjoy Meatloaf, and he's like got like an opera sounding voice. But I've never really watched operas. I know they're considered beautiful, and maybe one day I'll try and experience one. But I've never actually experienced an opera myself. Definitely impressive what they can do. Right now in the film, they're driving along in a hearse, kind of just adjacent to the highway. The TX in pursuit right now on the roof, shooting her with a take fate to the Met. <laughs> well, she would want to go to the Met Gala anyway, because that's where they have uh, Fashion Week every year, and she's a big fan of fashion, Uncle V. Even though, surprisingly, I took a fashion class in high school. And I passed it, so which one of us really knows fashion? Given I kind of was against my will. Uh, Kevin Kruger just said, did you know that O.J. Simpson was originally going to play the Terminator? I did know that, actually. It is funny because the rumor is that James Cameron didn't cast him because he didn't believe that people would believe that O.J. Simpson could kill anyone, which, of course, is very ironic and do we say rest in peace to OJ? How does that work right now? Because, I mean, most of us believe he killed his wife and Ron Goldman. So, I don't know. Well, OJ's dead now. And I don't know if he left a note saying that he did it or not. So, he might have took that to the grave. I can't believe this hearse is still driving. Very impressive. OJ Simpson can now rest knowing that his wife's killer is dead. <laughs> yeah, that's a good point, Kevin. <laughs> At least the leather jacket works for him in this movie. Uncle V just asked, John, what's your favorite movie car? Forgive me if you've answered this. I have actually never answered that, but believe it or not, I mean, it's it's a little bit like stereotypical, but I just love the smoke. I, I just love the Bandit from Smoking the Bandit. That's my favorite car of all time. I actually wanted that car for a long time. You know, when I was getting my first car, I was thought, oh, maybe I can get one of those. But obviously, uh, reality came into play and I knew I was never going to get that, but I would always want that. I always wanted the charger from the fast and the furious. Um, my favorite car and you have one of all time is a Mustang, but I always wanted a Fox body Mustang. 
a lot like Matt, you guys are living at my dreams having Mustangs. I don't, I, I don't have one. Uh, so unfortunately, and I probably never, my favorite, the truck I would own is a Ford Bronco speaking to OJ Simpson. Cause he got to have one. I wouldn't get him. I actually looked at one a long time ago. You'll appreciate this uncle V uh, Matt went with me. And it was a, like a 89 Bronco black with porn red interior. Mwah! It was gorgeous. I wanted that so bad, but uh, didn't have the money for it. And unfortunately, my car at the time, I wasn't going to pay for it. <clears throat> so and Uncle V, uh, so unfortunate. I love it. <laughs> uh, Kevin Kruger, I thought you would have picked the Batmobile. Uh, you know, it's funny. It's like I love the Batmobile, but, you know, it's kind of impractical. So it's not my favorite car of all time. Honestly, I yeah, I, I don't think I would ever like. If he, I was picking a favorite Batmobile, it would be Keaton's Batmobile. That's my favorite one of them. Or even, I actually also really appreciate the one from Batman Forever. But, you know, it's always the nostalgia for your first one. <clears throat> uh, the tampon red interior. Uh, yeah, I love them. I, I really love red interior. It's a shame. Can you get that now? I feel like now they won't give you everything in red. It'll be like you know, wood paneling with, or like, you know, black and like with like hints of red, but, or like red hints just all over the place, but it still will not be what they were doing. I mean, everything was red uncle V it was, it was special. And I just don't think we get that anymore. People used to like have their houses in, you know, that red shag carpet, uh, just certain things. We just lost the time. I wanted shag carpet in here. I mean, this carpet's thick, but it ain't shag. Do you own a muscle car? I don't own a muscle car, but uh, Uncle V does. Sucker for red. I have my interior done in red. I know your Uncle V's a muscle car guy. Unfortunately, I don't own one, Kevin. I uh, I have just a regular old fashioned black nissan ultima with a racing stripe on the side only on one side that i got when i fell asleep it scraped the guardrail but good news is i woke me right up and uh i just kept going didn't even stop just kind of scraped the guardrail and uh now my car looks very original but uh, it was everything was originally in just midnight black it was nice and you know ultima gets by she's special but yeah i've never had a really nice car or anything like that in my lifetime the nicest thing I ever had was a Jeep Grand Cherokee. One day, guys. One day. <clears throat> it is your destiny. Come on, John. You're not going to do this. If you're going to die, you at least die trying. Uh. <laughs> Uncle V rest. Have you ever seen any of the Death Stalkers? May have a May have asked that already. No, I actually haven't seen that. And you haven't asked that already. No, I haven't seen any of the Death Stalker movies. Are those good? Are those movies that Matt would enjoy? I'm still a little upset about um, a Serbian film. Even though it is actually a well-crafted film. Uncle Lee, I want your review of Poor Things. Number two is awesome. Conan rips. I got to check it out. No poor things here. <laughs> I want to know what you think of it, though. Kevin Kruger wrote, if they made this movie today, who would you cast for the TX? Hollywood probably would cast like Ronda Rousey or something like that. But if uh, you stay, honestly, Greta Gerwig would be a great Terminator. I think she could pull it off. If just you know, keeping the same vein of um, you know, model turned uh, Terminator. 
But who else? It's, uh, I mean, we've gotten other female Terminators at this point now. She was an only child. Oh. Really? That's it, huh? This is what we do with artificial intelligence. This guy's just sent out there to kill. Sorry for my voice being a little raspy. I don't know why it is today. <clears throat> Springtime coming over here up in the Northeast. Uncle V knows. So the season will change. Audio sounds a little bad here, at least from her perspective. That sounds like they messed up on the ADR. Yeah, her voice sounds different here. What's your next 4K review? Um, Actually, so this week, there's no... I don't think I have any new 4Ks on the horizon, so it's just going to be old 4K reviews. I'm actually trying to think of a list to do for this week that I'm going to film either tomorrow or Monday. I'm going to have a video up with David, a.k.a. Shamrock Balls, this week. We're going to be doing The Fog, so that'll be a long-form review. But as far as 4K Blu-ray, I think I'm going to review either It Follows this week or I was thinking maybe even Braveheart. As far as an individual review, maybe start the Star Trek 4K reviews. I don't know. Deciding because I have a couple like open spots this week. I ordered uh, Tinker Tailor Soldier Spy to review that and Monster Squad. So if those get here soon, I'll do those as well. I'll do one of those. So a lot of stuff up in the air this week. A lot of open spots. I have to review Spring this week for Frank from Frank's Medium Reviews for his uh, monthly review. So I'm looking forward to doing that because I've never seen Spring. Reminds me of T2, that shot. I mean, I guess T1, too, with the desert in the background. Does that look like Scott on the left? I love how it's just such a stereotypical. These four guys are walking in a group. Everyone's walking around. I'm still working in the background. It's exactly what they made fun of in Gold Member. Do you like the ending to this movie? I love the ending to this movie, Kevin. I think that's the best part of this movie is that they actually showed us Judgment Day. You know, that's a ballsy move, and I absolutely love them for it because they didn't give us the happy ending. You know, they really gave us the, the most bleak ending you could get, and it works for this movie, and it actually ends up really saving this movie in a lot of ways, even though, like I've said, this movie, overall, it's okay. Like, that looks like CGI of the time, so no, and they linger on it way too long. But now back driving the desert in the Winnebago, not bad. That's what you think. Road trip movie in a lot of ways, too, which is funny. Can't do that. My coworker says that's what makes T3 the best in the franchise. Oh, the ending? I mean, it, it saves the movie in a lot of ways, but I don't think that's what makes it the best in the franchise. It is definitely cool that we actually get to see Judgment Day. It's a lot of fun that we actually get to see it for the first time in film, but I don't think that's the thing that makes it the best. It definitely makes the ending to this movie memorable and makes you remember T3. And, and when you bring up T3, you got to talk about the fact that we actually see Judgment Day. It's a cool thing, but... No, I still can't make that the reason why this is the best. It's still like a 7 or 8 out of 10. We know what she's there to do, and it's not good. I'm Uncle V just said, I remember seeing T3 in theaters and being utterly disappointed. I wasn't disappointed at the time when I saw it in theaters. 
and I've never really been let down, but I mean, in comparison to T1 and T2, it, it's just never going to reach those levels. And it, I mean, I probably never could bring him, not bring him back. James Cameron, all of our expectations are probably way too high for this movie, but I still was pretty happy with the outcome mainly in 2003. All the funding you ever need. This is one of my favorite movie theaters experiences, Kevin Kruger wrote. Yeah, I, I have a very fond memory, too, with this in theaters. Um, you know, honestly, back then, in the 2000s, that was my favorite era of going to the movies. Uh, I just always, no matter if the movie was good or bad, I usually always had fun at the theaters. So, I mean, like, yeah, I remember seeing Hulk around this time, too. I think that's 2003 also, and that movie just bored me to tears i really need to go back to that one i haven't seen that in a long time t1 and t i like how it's t1 and 2 they even the movie knows what's the better terminator films i like that these are supposed to be the earliest of the early terminators Can't figure out what's going on. Bet you that's Adele. Mm -hmm. Waiting for orders. If only he knew what he's about to do. This is it. Pressing a Y on a keyboard. Up, oh, they thought. Yeah, everything looks pretty good here. Everything looks like it's going to go well. Uh, but what happened? Told you it was a Dell. Just see the Dell logo in the background. I love this moment in the movie, though. It's crazy to think that this movie is so old that, that kids were born when this movie came out can now drink. That's really crazy, Kevin. Makes us all look really old. The fact we can remember going to see this in theaters and they were born that year. Ah, oh my God. Yeah, it's tremendous. Uh, honestly, this guy, the fact he's still walking around after getting shot like that is impressive. Yeah, just check it out then. She'll be back. Yeah, at least you're aware. Again, that was supposed to be the big cheer and movement and moment in theaters. I enjoyed it for that. Us. Unfortunate, but that's about. There we go. These guys. I like that they look like they have faces on them. Kevin Kruger wrote, if they remake the Terminator, my coworker says that Michael Bay should direct. My God, no. Do not let Michael Bay anywhere near a Terminator film. I'm actually surprised he hasn't made a Terminator film because it seems like it'd be right up his alley. But no, keep Michael Bay away. I don't even know. I mean, obviously, I would love Christopher Nolan to direct or Denis Villeneuve, but that'll never, ever in a bajillion years happen. So you need like someone who's like up and coming who wants to take a shot at it, preferably somebody who's a fan. Uncle V-Roll, Tinto Bass would do a great Terminator. I imagine that he would lean right into Arnold being nude and something else would end up happening that we didn't see coming. Coming.
But I don't think that Terminator can actually have sex when you think about it, because he would definitely kill them with the amount of weight in him. I mean, it's nice of them to try and drag the ter- uh, you know, the dad along like this, but he's dead. He never had a shot. Any possible... See, this is what I mean. This is what we want. Guy's got level 5 clearance. See it right on his badge. Oh, Kevin Kruger said he's writing a screenplay that takes place between T1 and T2. That's awesome. I assume that... Are you uh, looking at it like to what... Um, what... You know, kind of in the same vein of like the Sarah Connor Chronicles, like what John and uh, Sarah were doing in that in between time, or from a different perspective, from different characters' perspectives. Because I mean, you could dive into a lot of different ways like that. Get down. And that still looks cool. Dad's in rough shape. They think they're on their mission, but little do they know what's about to happen. <laughs> this is an awesome fight scene, though. It's an origin story of the first line of the T-800. Oh, that's awesome, actually. You know, they kind of do a little bit in the extras for T-3, um, show the origin of the T-800, of how they got Arnold Schwarzenegger. Like, he, they, they put a stupid fake voice on him and everything. It sounds nothing like Arnold. It's like a country accent. But they based the look of the T-800 series off of that guy supposedly so i thought you know it's an extra and it's a deleted scene which thankfully because if you go and watch that scene it's awful but i would love to see a good origin story that that's awesome that you're writing that kevin Now this again, I like that they show the weight of the Terminators in this movie. The TA, the TX, and the T eight fifty both, you know, they're heavy. They're metal. The sound effects, though, not great. I'm gonna be honest, but that looks pretty cool. Even if it looks ridiculous, it still looks pretty cool. This one's the T one fourteen. Well, these effects are pretty good. She's got no damage while well, Arnold is struggling at this point. So the TA-50 is essentially like the mid-generation update like what we get with the PS5 Pro or what we'll get whatever the hell Xbox Series X Pro will be. They'll probably call it the Series X.5 or some bullshit. And now she's trying to make him bad. There it is, getting that tunnels. Uh oh.
What do you think of John Connor's being a Terminator in Genesis? You know, again, like, I don't mind them trying something new. I didn't feel betrayed by that. Um, I always forget the actor's name. I know it's not Jason Patrick, but it's uh, something like that. That guy's great in Chappaquiddick. He's always good. But I don't think he was well cast as John Connor in that movie. I didn't mind that twist. I didn't mind a lot of the decisions made. It was just horribly executed and just so much dumb stuff in that. Um, you know, again, trying to make Jai Courtney a thing, it, just like a lot, of, like with Sam Worthington and Salvation, I, they're just too bland and they're too plain and they're too plug and play. And it's just, uh, there's nothing to them. They have, uh, <laughs> they try. Then obviously there's just a lot of just bad stuff in that movie. And then basically trying to, recapture the T1 vibes. I don't think it works at all in that movie. That was a good sound effect. Is he smart enough to do this? I think it's still a fun movie for what it is. Yeah, I mean, I think I'm probably the hardest person on Genesis. Like, Matt likes Genesis, and I know some people like Genesis, but to me, Genesis just doesn't work at all. Like, I mean, like, I get what they were going for. I love some of the ideas, but I, I don't like that they were trying to be... Um, terminator one and basically try to do a retelling of it which i get everyone's doing multiverse stuff and this is before that but i don't like the choice in actors and i love the actors themselves i mean jai corny like i said is very plain but he's done pretty good like in the suicide squad too and what's her name from game of thrones she's pretty good in that i know not as good as she is as Daenerys or anything like that so it's unfortunate. Oh, Spider Man is here. He wrote, uh, Media, can you, uh, the Argo 4K Blu ray? Yes, yeah, Spider Man. I actually was just looking at that the other day. Uh, let me look at the Argo 4K right now. I just ordered, um, the other 4K. Somebody, a Tinker Taylor Soldier Spy. So I'm going to be doing that review soon as well. Let's see what the Argo 4K is going for at the moment. This is a cool sequence, by the way. Uh, 18 bucks. I'll see if I can find it. But honestly, right now, it says it won't be delivered till Friday. I'll see if I can find a better version. If anyone who's watching this video can find me a way to get Argo on 4K for a little bit of a lower price, I will review it for the channel. Because I do like Argo, actually. What happened to tell him Freddy sent you, Kevin Kruger said? I don't know. He hasn't been here in a while. He comes and goes, though. He does that sometimes. I'm sure he's still floating around. Maybe he just doesn't have the time to comment as much. You know, that does happen time to time. But usually everyone comes back. I've uh, seen people disappear for a year and just start leaving comments again. And they do, like, one big jump where they'll go down the channel and watch all the videos. You know, I get that. I do that, too. Like, I, I have the people that I subscribe to, and then I'll go back. And, like, I might not watch their videos and until once a week and do one big like loop of them. Oh, I think they're I trained on it. Great Claire. Looks like Arnold made it. At least he's able to tell him. Like, just listen to him. He knows. Uh, he's overrided. 
Kevin Kruger asked, uh, do you expect your subscribers to watch every video you put out? No, I don't. I mean, if I did, every video would be like in the 3000s view. No, there's no way that everyone, I get that. And plus there's also different types of videos on the channel. Like, you know, the live streams. I don't expect a lot of people to come watch something like this then on their Saturday night, or maybe they will on replays. Uh, I know there's just people who subscribe to the channel just for let's talk physical media on Sundays. Um, and I'm sure plenty of people just subscribe for the 4k Blu-ray reviews. You know, some stuff's just for me. Like I, um, I like to do new video reviews for new movies. So, you know, every once in a while I'll put those out. I know not everybody likes those. You know, for the most part, there's a physical media channel, but I like to do new movie reviews too. I like to be a full-time film critic one day, whether it be on YouTube or anywhere else. So I feel like I got to make sure I see as many new movies as I can as well. So I don't expect everybody to watch those. It's just, that's the name of the game. And Spider-Man wrote, uh, let's talk entertainment or media. Uh, could you review the account in 4k? Blu-ray? I believe I can review that. Actually, you're a big Ben Affleck guy, Spider-Man, huh? Uh, I love Ben Affleck myself, so I don't mind doing that. But yeah, I could probably review those. Um, the account's an older 4K, but I don't mind doing that. I like the account. And if you guys know, Amazon is going to be releasing the account in two. Um, I don't know if it's going to be released in theaters as well, but I guess it's some kind of work with Ben Affleck. So if they released there in theaters. I imagine we would get the account. Uncle Vero, my type of Saturday night. My type of Saturday night, too. I mean, I was never the going out type. Just never was me. I always like to go to the movies on Saturday night. So hang out with you guys, talk shop. I don't mind that at all. As Arnold throws a temper tantrum and destroys a nice Grand Cherokee. But yes, I am. He's my favorite actor. That's awesome. Um, yeah, I love Ben. So I don't mind doing that. Um, yeah, just look for him in the next, like within a month. Give me a little bit of time because I usually make the schedule ahead of time. Sometimes, though, we get thrown for a loop and something gets delayed and then I have to find videos to do. And that's where I kind of go to like a list of stuff. And that's like what the accountant and Argo would be on. I'll fill them in there and Tinker Tailor Soldier Spy. So definitely keep an eye out. So I know. But yeah, that's kind of like what it boils down to. Some people just really like this channel just for the uh, 4K Blu-ray reviews. And I get that. And you know, that's the bread and butter. That's what keeps the lights on. I totally understand that. Some people are here just to they like to hang out with me, and I appreciate that too. Will Dennis be on the channel soon? Uh, my best Dennis. He's just been really busy lately. Dennis kind of comes and goes whenever he has time. That's why, like, we he wanted to be like an official member of the channel, but he's very busy with work, so he'll be back though. I was actually just talking to Dennis today because we were talking about um Funny, you'll actually appreciate this, Kevin. He was asking me if I think that the Fear Street movies will ever come to 4K Blu-ray. And my answer was no, because unfortunately they're Netflix movies and only Netflix movies that come to 4K are through Criterion. And the Fear, Fe Fear Street trilogy does not fit the Criterion collection for sure, as much as I wish it did. So I don't think those will ever come to physical media as much as I wish they did, because I love the Fear Street movies. And honestly, I can't wait to watch them this Halloween season. Uh, we're coming to the big ending here, guys. What do you think is going to happen? TA-50 back on temporarily. A piece in the hills. Not bad idea. Do you ever buy bootleg Blu-ray movies, or is that only on streaming? Um, I actually never buy blue, uh, bootleg movies at all. I've never been into that. That's why I never bought the true. I don't fault anyone for doing this, by the way. It's just something I don't do. I just always, um, I always like things that are officially released. Like I know people have those. Like you can buy the Star Wars original trilogy. If you buy like the uh, someone else has printed them on 4K Blu-ray and everything like that, but I, I I won't buy them because like they're not officially released, so it's just not something that I personally do. Uh, but yeah, as far as like streaming stuff, yeah, it's just you know I don't even stream anything really bootleg personally either.
I'm a quality snob, so of course, if it's in a lower quality, it's just like a, it'll immediately turn me off. It's just like my eyes and ears, like his, well, they'll find the flaws. It's a problem. <laughs> I mean, it's good for the channel, I guess, because I could find flaws on Blu-rays and 4Ks, but it's a curse because like, I don't want that. <laughs> I want every movie to be perfect. Have you seen Fire in the Sky? No, and that's why I haven't answered your question about those movies yet, because I Fire in the Sky, I think I have to pay to rent it. It's not... Oh, actually, maybe that was on Tubi. I got to definitely check that out. Hey, Frank's Media Reviews is here. What's up, buddy? What's up, Frank? We're just finishing up Terminator 3 right now at the very end of the movie. Uh, Uncle V just asked, do you have laser Laserdisc ever can, uh, contemplate a collection? Uncle V, I was just talking about this the other day. Whenever I get some money, I would love to actually explore Laserdisc because there's people out there who tell me about the quality of Laserdisc, and I've only experienced it through my when I was a kid, like my friends, like dads would have laser disc collections and not many of them. And I would only see like certain movies. So I never really got to truly experience laser disc, but that was like the 4k Blu-ray before 4k Blu-ray. And I've always wanted to. So maybe one day uncle V, uh, got to feed the kids dinner, but wanted to say hi. Well, thanks for popping in Frank. I really appreciate that buddy. Uh, enjoy your dinner. I hope you guys are having something delicious. I just appreciate you stopping in here. Man, that depressing is the uh, man that ending is depressing. Rogue One, it is depressing. Um, and I, I think I award the film a kudos for that. I think it's great. Here's Arnold, looks awesome like this, by the way. Kevin Kruger asks, When are you moving to Houston? Well, that's actually, um, at the moment kind of ruled out right now. I'm just trying to make a living here in New York, so you know, because the thing is, is like, I don't want to, I own this house, it's not the greatest house, but. We own the house and the housing market right now, trying to sell this. Yeah, we'd make some money on it, but then we'd also have to buy a house or rent. And we don't know if that's the smart decision to do right now. So we're going to try and make New York work one more time. And, uh, you know, I've lived on Long Island my entire life. I don't necessarily want to leave it. And, you know, I love the house I live in. I wish it was a little bit better, but it's tough. So I think I'm going to stay here. At least for the time being, that is. Try and make these jobs out here work. Rogue One, I mean, Skynet activating the nuclear war is depressing. And knowing how this could happen if we aren't too careful makes things more depressing and scary to think about. Oh, 100%. We don't learn. These movies should have taught us that, you know, this is a bad decision. The TX just growling, by the way, at the moment. Somehow, when you're, it, you turn into a lion. But yeah, it's unbelievably depressing, and it's something that, unfortunately, that's just how civilization always ends. It's not naturally. We'll do it to ourselves. I didn't know you were moving. Uh, yeah, I'm not. Uh, Rogue One, right now, I'm currently not moving. Like It's something we've talked about. Faith went down to Houston and checked it out. Um, but we're going to try and make this work. I'm working a new job right now, and we're going to try and make it work up here. You know, eventually I want Let's Talk to be my only job. When I started this, I said 35, I'm 32. We'll see if I could everything. I'm going to do everything in my power to make this my career. So I just got to try and have jobs that work around it so I can continue to do this. I want to try and do new movie reviews and do them more on like Tuesdays or Thursdays. So they're a little earlier. So there's always new stuff and, you know, always new stuff in the work. I have the shows that I host with Frank's Medium Reviews, Carmela and David as well. Um, you know, me and David are recording tomorrow. So we always find spots to record. And we got to, me and da David's actually like planning out the year. So we have a lot coming on that end. Uh, Kevin, Rowe, I hope by the end of the year you could do this full time. I mean, I hope so too. If I could do this full time, just imagine the amount of videos I'll do. I I have plans. It's just, you know, we got to get there. I was thinking of, I've always kicked around the idea of doing like a morning show where we just talk about the news from the day before and movies and sports. You know, there's always plenty of things. It's just, you know, you need the algorithm to work. You need to find a following. It's not easy and anything worth having isn't. So it's worth it to just, you know, you don't want it to just be handed to you. You know, you want to kind of feel like you earned it. So I, I, these are all growing pains. Everything works right now. It's at least doing well, the channel and uh, appreciate it. Found all you guys and I, that's a blessing. 
then that's the opposite of what these people are about to have happen to them. And it's weird because it's like Fallout right now. Fallout being on and uh, what happens to these people uh, coming out of the bunker. What bunker do you think this was? Thirty-year-old computers. You know, I hope that there's food down there. I hope it's like, I mean, I'm sure they have canned goods. How often do you get recognized in public because of YouTube? You know, it's funny is that Matt actually got recognized, and he hasn't done this in a couple of years, but like because Matt's always in Best Buys, and Best Buy is probably the place that we would mostly get recognized anyway, or anything like movie related places but it's funny that matt still gets recognized and it's really not that often <laughs> mainly because of uh the region that i live in like i said it's long island is like uh there's some movie buffs out here but it's not the biggest movie buff area if i went to the city it'd be a little bit more and I, that's the one reason i was kicking around the city but it's just so expensive to live in the city that it's you know i gotta just make long island kind of work because but yeah we're a lot fewer far between out here I'm sure you guys experience that too. You know, just not as many, especially cinephiles. Like sometimes you gotta like talk to people and like what they think is a great movie might, you know, obviously to us as we've seen hundreds or thousands of movies, it's a little bit different. This is how you know he was gonna be a good leader though, John. He was fully prepared to do whatever it took to stop Judgment Day. But now he's got a lead. And that's why we end up with Terminator Salvation. There was no stopping it. Most of my family and coworkers don't like movies, Kevin said. Yeah, that's me too. Uh, especially my my entire immediate family. Like Matt likes movies, Dennis likes movies, but like my brothers and sisters, my parents, like my mom likes movies too, but you know, my mom lives in Arizona, so I don't really talk to her too much. My dad's not a movie guy, so th most of my friends aren't into movies, so it's tough. <clears throat> They all think it's stupid that I buy Blu-rays. I mean, that's always how people look at people collect physical media. My last job, they never got it. Nobody in my last job, the one I just recently left, none of them ever understood physical collecting. Or, and I would like, you know, let them borrow movies, but they would all think it's dumb. And I, you know, I try and explain it to them, but you know, that's just kind of how the average consumer is and the average people. Uh, bro, 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 eh, I can hear the audio from the movie. Those headphones are good, aren't they? Yeah, no, they are really good. I didn't know you guys could hear that. Is it bad? <laughs> I hope it wasn't doing that the whole time. Yeah, these are Steel Series. They're really good, uh, honestly, these headphones. I love them. I've had them for a couple of years now. No, they use a similar shot to this in, in Genesis. With the farms. But this is shocking. I get scary. Every nuclear bomb going off at the exact same time. Love descending. The red eye going out with the dust. Now this looks good. 
battle has just begun. And then six years, we'll find out the sequel. Depressing as hell. Do you watch a movie every day? Yeah, that's one thing I make sure. And that's the end of Terminator 3, guys. Ugh. But yes, I do watch a movie every single day, uh, Kevin. At least one movie I try and fit into my schedule is like my one gift to my semi <laughs> 